ಸರ್ವೋಪನಿಷದೋ ಗಾವ ದೋಗ್ಧ ಗೋಪಾಲನಂದನ ಪಾರ್ಥೋವತ್ಸ ಸುಧೀರ್ಭೋಕ್ತ ದುಗ್ಧಂ ಗೀತಾಮೃತ ಮಹತ್ ಗೀತಾ ಸುಗೀತ ಕರ್ತವ್ಯಾತಿ ಮನ್ನೈ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಸಂಗ್ರಹೈ ಯಾ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಪದ್ಮನಾಭಸ ಮುಖಪದ್ಮಾತ್ ವಿಸ್ತೃತ ಶ್ರೀಮನ್ನಾರಾಯಣ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಟೆಡ್ ಅಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಅವತಾರ ಸಂದಸ್ ಭೂಲೋಕ ಆಲ್ದು ಹಿಸ್ ಅವತಾರ ಸರ್ ಕೌಂಟ್ಲೆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾವತಾರ ಹೂ ಲೆಫ್ಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಥ್ರೆಷರ್ ನೋನ್ ಆಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತ ನನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಅದರ್ ಇನ್ಕಾರ್ನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೀಸ್ಟ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಲೆಂತ್ ಆಲ್ದು ರಾಮ ಹ್ಯಾಡ್ ರಿವೀಲ್ಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಫ್ಯೂ ಶ್ಲೋಕಸ್ they are not a shastra as such whereas shri krishna had clarified the doubts of arjuna also we can assume that it's all clarifications given to us arjuna was confused krishna cleared the confusion so anybody who is confused can get clear cleared through gita if we are not confused even then gita would help us by enriching our knowledge and bhakti we are here today to discuss the essence of gita i know that if we are called to study all the 700 shlokas of gita in detail many would not turn up often the titles that are given to upanyasakas are only about essences and not about the detail we have time only to deal with the essence and not with every shloka as this is the fast world so we don't have much time already i need to apologize for my delay so with the time left let us discuss the essence of gita shri alavanda whose name was Yamuna Acharya, has authored a word called Gita Artha Sangraha. Sangraham is gist. Gita Artha Sangraham, the gist of Gita, the essence of Gita. And this work has only 32 verses, only 32 songs. And the glory of this work is with 18 slokas, through 18 shlokas he gives the summary of each of the 18 chapters he doesn't stop there he has written one shloka which summarizes all the 700 shlokas that was the first shloka of this work and the next three shlokas they summarize each of the three hexes in Gita a headset comprises of six chapters so chapter 1 to 6 is called as prathama shatka shatka that which has six chapters prathama shatka madhyama shatka and charama shatka chapters 7 to 12 are known as madhyama shatka chapters 13 to 18 are known as charama shatka Swami Alavanda, he had written one shloka which summarizes each shatka. So that would count to three. The first shloka to summarize all the 18 chapters. The second, third and fourth to give the gist of the three hexes. And then on 18 individual shlokas that talk about the summary of each chapter. So, in about 22 shlokas, he had revealed all the esoteric meanings of Gita. Then in the last part, in the last 10 shlokas, he further explains how we should put to practice Bhakti Yoga. So, 
So in 32 shlokas, he summarizes what has been said in the Gita and not stopping there, he also gives us special tips to follow Gita, to follow the Bhakti Marga preached by Gita. Let's deal with only one shloka for today, the first shloka, which summarizes all the 700 shlokas, 18 chapters, 3 hexes. Swadharma, Jnana, Vairagya, Sadhya Bhakti Eka Gocharaha, Narayanaha, Param Brahma, Gita Shastre, Samiritaha. This is a simple shloka. Gita itself is simple because it is in a meter called Anuttuk Chandas. When you write poetry, that is set to a meter. That is known as Chandas in Sanskrit. Anuttuk Chandas, Trishtuk Chandas, Brihati, Pankti. When we perform Sandhya Vandanam, we recite all these Chandas as a mantra. Anuttupita Chandas, which is very, very simple in poetry. Each quarter of a shloka would have eight syllables. Eight into four. There would only be 32 syllables in every shloka. So, Anuttup Chandas is very, very simple. When the Chandas is simple, don't be misled that the meaning would also be simple. Only the words and meter is simple. Whereas the underline, the deeper meaning of Gita is quite difficult to understand. Without the help of our preceptors, we ourselves cannot find the truth. We can't search for it in Gita. So we resort to the glorious preceptors, our Acharyas. Alavanda never fails us. With this loka, he summarizes all the 700. I'll explain to you word by word the meaning for this loka. If you keep that in mind, any day you can recall, recollect what Gita has told us. Swadharma, Jnana, Vairagya, Sadhya Bhakti, Bhakteka Gocharaha, Narayanaha, Gita Shastre, Samiritaha, Iritaha, Explained, Samiritaha, Well Explained, Gita Shastre, Samiritaha, Well Explained in Gita Shastra. What is Well Explained in Gita Shastra? Narayanaha, Param Brahma, Gita Shastre, Samiritaha. Narayana, the Supreme Master, Brahman, is well explained in Gita Shastra. So whenever you look to a text, what do you expect? You expect the text to reveal the reality to us. That's for what we read through anything, which is Tattva. When you tell Tattva, it means truth, reality, a real being. Gita Shastra reveals that Brahman is the ultimate tattva. Parabrahma Gita Shastriya Samiritaha. So Gita explains that Parabrahman is the ultimate. Who is that Parabrahman? Narayanaha Parambrahma Gita Shastriya Samiritaha. It explains without any doubt. It categorically states that Narayana is the Parambrahma, is the supreme, the ultimate reality. Narayanaha Param Brahma Gita Shastre Samiritaha. Once I realize that Parabrahman is supreme, then what is my next course of action? If I have realized the supreme, I should realize myself too. And how am I related to the supreme? Gita also explains that glorious relationship. So I need to know about the Jivatma myself. I know about Jivatma which is me. Now, what is my next course? How to attain Paramatma? The moment I realize that I am related to Paramatma, I am subservient to Him, I am dependent on Him, and my essential nature is eternal bliss and not this pain and agony, then I take efforts. I strive hard to reach Him, to attain Him. Then I would like to know what are the paths available. What are the means available to reach Narayana? So the first was 
narayana param brahma gita shastre samirita the reality the ultimate supreme narayana was well explained but that is not enough for any shastra having explained the reality there is no point in leaving it like that if you are informed that there is going to be a gita lecture today but you are not given any more information what is the use of that information you must be told what is the subject where is the venue what time is the lecture how to reach to that lecture without this the knowledge about the message is of no use at all so i have got a message from the gita that narayana is the ultimate but if it does not talk any further then this message of is of no use to me so let's go further into the shloka narayana param brahma gita shastre samiritah how is narayana attained bhaktyek gocharah narayana gita shastre samiritah bhakti ek gocharah narayana is attained only through the discipline of devotion bhakti is the discipline of devotion bhakti ek gocharah narayana narayana is attained only through bhakti gita shastre samiritah so bhakti is also well explained in gita not only the destination but also the route not only the end but also the means both are well explained in gita bhaktyek gocharah narayana narayana one who is attained only through bhakti gita shastre samiritah so bhakti shastra and the end for bhakti shastra both are well explained in gita shastra is bhakti straight away available can we start it today whereas yamuna acharya says that that is not possible bhakti is explained in gita in the madhyama shatka that is between 7th chapter to 12th chapter then what has krishna revealed in the first six chapters in the prathama shatka the path that leads to bhakti is explained in the first to six chapters bhakti is a free way you can't directly enter the free way you need to take other routes through that road you get led to the free way and you can travel fast in the free way reach your destination so there must be some side roads that lead you towards the free way free way is bhakti shastra what are the other roads available to reach bhakti shastra bhakti is somewhat quite high not that close to us sva dharma jnana vairagya bhakti bhakti itself is a destination now earlier i told you bhakti is a means reaching narayana as the destination now change switch keep bhakti as the destination how do i reach there sva dharma jnana vairagya jnana is knowledge it is self realization swadharma is practicing one's prescribed duties swadharma stands for karma yoga jnana does not talk about jnana yoga but it only talks about the jnana part the knowledge part in karma yoga karma yoga itself has jnana without jnana we cannot practice our duties at all so swadharma jnana and it is just not enough that you practice everything you need to practice it with detachment that's vairagya sva dharma jnana vairagya sadhya bhakti so how do we attain bhakti by practicing one's prescribed duties with the requisite realization and knowledge and with detachment we are left to bhakti practicing bhakti yoga we attained narayana all these are explained in gita shastra i hope i am clear i have not confused you sva dharma jnana vairagya sadhya bhakti bhakti ek gocharah narayana whenever you read a sanskrit shloka you need to split it first so that we are able to remember the meaning rightly sva dharma my prescribed duties jnana duties cannot be done without the requisite knowledge jnana vairagya i can't do my, do my duty with all sorts of desires vairagya detachment is required sva dharma jnana vairagya sadhya bhakti if you continue practicing this you are led to bhakti yoga 
భక్త్యేక గోచర నారాయణ భక్తి ఇస్ ద ఓన్లీ పాత్ అవైలబుల్ టు అటైన్ నారాయణ భక్త్యేక గోచర నారాయణ గీతా శాస్త్రే సమీరిత దీస్ ఆర్ ఆల్ వెల్ ఎక్స్ప్లైన్డ్ ఇన్ గీతా శాస్త్ర సో భక్తి యోగ అండ్ ద ప్రీ రిక్వెస్ట్ కర్మ యోగ వైరాగ్య అండ్ ద రిసల్ట్ ఆఫ్ భక్తి యోగ అటైన్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ నారాయణ ఆర్ ఆల్ ఎక్స్ప్లైన్డ్ ఇన్ గీతా శాస్త్ర నౌ ఇఫ్ యూ స్ప్లిట్ దిస్ శ్లోక వి కెన్ ఈజిలీ రిమెంబర్ ఆల్ ద త్రీ హెగ్జెట్స్ నారాయణ గీతా శాస్త్రే సమీరిత నారాయణ ఇస్ వెల్ ఎక్స్ప్లైన్డ్ దట్ యూ కీప్ ఇట్ ఫర్ ద లాస్ట్ సిక్స్ చాప్టర్స్ భక్త్యేక గోచర నారాయణ కీప్ ఇట్ ఫర్ ద మిడిల్ సిక్స్ చాప్టర్స్ భక్తి యోగ ఇస్ ఎక్స్ప్లైన్డ్ ఇన్ ద మధ్యమ షట్క స్వధర్మ జ్ఞాన వైరాగ్య ఇస్ ఎక్స్ప్లైన్డ్ ఇన్ ద ఫస్ట్ హెగ్జెట్ సి హౌ సింపుల్ దిస్ లుక్స్ నో ద ఫస్ట్ హెగ్జెట్ టాక్స్ అబౌట్ స్వధర్మ జ్ఞాన వైరాగ్య ద సెకండ్ భక్తి థర్డ్ అటైన్మెంట్ స్వధర్మ జ్ఞాన వైరాగ్య సాధ్య భక్తి భక్తి ఇస్ ఎక్స్ప్లైన్డ్ బిట్వీన్ ద సెవెంత్ చాప్టర్ టు ట్వెల్త్ చాప్టర్ అండ్ అవర్ అటైన్మెంట్ అవర్ లిబరేషన్ ఇస్ వెల్ ఎక్స్ప్లైన్ ఇన్ ద లాస్ట్ సిక్స్ చాప్టర్స్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ రిమెంబర్ దిస్ లోక యూ కెన్ టీచ్ ఎనీబడి వాట్ గీతా ఇస్ ఐ ఎమ్ నాట్ టెలింగ్ యూ యూ ఆల్సో బికమ్ అన్ ఉపన్యాసక దెన్ వీ వుడ్ నాట్ గెట్ అ ఛాన్స్ ఎప్పుడు ఎయిట్ యూచర్ కాలో ద వే అవర్ అవర్ పూర్వాచార్య ఆథర్డ్ వర్క్స్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ టు టాక్ ఫర్ వన్ అవర్ యూ హ్యావ్ అ సబ్జెక్ట్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ టు ఎక్స్పాండ్ ద సేమ్ ఎక్స్ట్రాపోలేట్ ద సేమ్ ఫర్ టెన్ అవర్స్ ద సేమ్ శ్లోక విడ్ హెల్ప్ యూ శ్రీ వేదాంత దేశిక హ్యాస్ అగైన్ ఆథర్డ్ అ గ్లోరియస్ వర్క్ నోన్ హాస్ గీతార్థ సంగ్రహ రక్ష ఇట్స్ అ కమెంటరీ టు గీతార్థ సంగ్రహ ఆళవందార్ యామునాచార్యస్ ఒరిజినల్ వర్క్ టెక్స్ట్ పోయటరీ ఇస్ గీతార్థ సంగ్రహ ఎ కమెంటరీ ఇన్ ప్రోస్ ఇస్ గీతార్థ సంగ్రహ రక్ష సో విత్ దట్ సంగ్రహ రక్ష లెట్ మీ ఫర్దర్ ఎక్స్ప్లెయిన్ టు యూ బై రిలేటింగ్ ద వేరియస్ శ్లోకాస్ ఇన్ వేరియస్ చాప్టర్స్ టు దిస్ శ్లోక స్వధర్మ జ్ఞాన వైరాగ్య సాధ్య భక్త్యేక గోచర నారాయణ పరం బ్రహ్మ గీతా శాస్త్రే సమీరిత the first six chapters talk about karma yoga we are all karma yogis are we not we would wish to be i don't know whether we are or not but we all would like to be karma yogis there is one the the, the, the most surprising thing about gita is having explained everything about karma gnana and bhakti yoga in the last shloka 18th chapter 66th shloka krishna tells that sarva dharmanu parityajya మామేకం శరణం వ్రజ అహం తో ఆ సర్వపాపేభ్యో మోక్షయిష్యామి మా శుచ రినౌన్స్ ఆల్ ద ధర్మస్ ఆల్ ద వర్చ్యూస్ ఆల్ ద డిసిప్లిన్స్ విచ్ ఆర్ ప్రీస్ యూ సో ఫార్ సర్వధర్మాను పరిత్యజ్య మామేకం శరణం వ్రజ రిసార్ట్ ఓన్లీ టు మీ సరెండర్ హోల్ హార్టెడ్లీ టు మీ మాం ఏకం శరణం వ్రజ అహం ద అమ్నీషియన్ ద ఆల్ పవర్ఫుల్ అల్మైటీ కృష్ణ మీ త్వా ద మీన్ the powerless the weak atman you twa sarva pape bhya i i clear you i release you of all the clutches of all the papams sarva pape bhya from all the papams moksha ishyami i liberate you of all the papams moksha cha do not be concerned at all don't worry arjuna we would think why this verse at the end and why not at the beginning if so we need not go through the ordeal of karma yoga gnana yoga bhakti yoga and all that any o krishna has told us to renounce everything sarva dharmanu parityajya if he had mentioned this shloka at the beginning the essence of gita would have been much simpler unfortunately that was not to be unless we know karma gnana bhakti yoga and the difficulty in practicing them we would not respect the sharanagati itself sharanagati is like brahmastra it can be shot only at the end not at the beginning and it can be applied only once and not whenever you want to that is why krishna did not reveal that secret there are many more secrets in gita shastra let's go through them swadharma jnana vairagya sadhya bhakti we will keep bhakti after 15 20 minutes now let us deal with the earlier shloka swadharma jnana vairagya what does this mean vairagya is detachment detachment from what renunciation of what i need to renounce three one kartrutva buddhi two 
mamata three phala phala is a human end i need to renounce all the materialistic ends all the low human ends that's known as phala tyaga mamata tyaga that this karma deed belongs to me this place belongs to me all these belong to me that's mamata mamata tyaga shed that kartrutva buddhi tyaga shed the idea that i am the doer i am the performer i am not i am only an instrument in the hands of krishna and he is the real performer and he too is not mad in subjecting me to difficulties he he presses me into action <coughs> guided by my karmas not just as it is through his whims and fancies so i do something but i am not the real doer so meditate that i am not the doer this is known as akartritva anusandhana i am the doer effectively but i am not the doer because i am not the only doer to accomplish anything you need the help of five people atma paramatma deha pranavayu and all your sensual organs without all the five coming together without they cooperating you cannot complete any job successfully so you are only one of the five then why claim all so krishna says you are not the karta arjuna you reflect that you are not the karta this is kartrutva buddhi tyaga so these three are the detachments the vairagya explained by yamunacharya kartrutva buddhi tyaga mamata tyaga and phala tyaga this is vairagya then jnana what is the requisite knowledge to perform karma yoga knowledge about or realizing that the atman is eternal and deha the body is perishable this is what we need to distinguish we all misconstrued that the atman and body are one and the same they are not so i am a man i dress like a man because this is a body of a man i am a woman i dress like a woman because this is a body of a woman but the atman is neither a man nor a woman it is neither a cat nor a dog it is neither a deva nor an asura nor a human being atman is above all these differences one who looks at the atmans they unite one who looks at the body they disunite they are disjointed they only discriminate so we need to look at the atman realizing the atman and the essential nature of the jivatma is jnana without which bhakti yoga and jnana yoga or karma yoga would not be resorted to at all i would not like to practice karma yoga if i think i am this body i would only go ahead earn a lot build new homes earn a lot save a lot be happy if i only think my atman me the atman and this body are one and the same they are not different then nobody would listen to gita nobody will come to practice karma yoga gyan yoga bhakti yoga because all these yogas they only talk about a very very simple living a peaceful living they don't much talk about living living is not is it not different from leaving krishna talks about that you will leave peacefully you will reach my lotus feet if i think that this body is atman i won't think of leaving this world at all i am quite happy enjoying the material pleasures unless i distinguish i reason out that this body is totally different this perishes whereas atma is eternal there's no point in listening to gita the whole of second chapter krishna only explains the differences between the body and the atma body is perishable whereas atma is eternal body has many parts so it perishes deteriorates fast whereas atma has no parts avayavame adu kedaiyad adu thaniya irukra badiyale atma is eternal so this is the requisite knowledge essential nature about the atman is if you ask me to define that what an atman is if you ask me what is this microphone made of it is made of iron what is this wire made of plastic what is this floor made of wood what is atma made of if you ask the question what is it made of it is made of complete jnana jnana is realization is knowledge atman is complete of knowledge then why am i not knowledgeable why am i not wise i am the atman then why am i not knowledgeable because it's covered surya is effulgent is brilliant but clouds can cover 
moon can be covered by clouds surya can be covered by clouds once the cover is removed then you need not plead to surya to be brilliant anymore if the brilliance which automatically would reach you a diamond is brilliant it is lustrous but it was covered in mud mandala ko undu tusheertu shagadira undu you need to remove the cover once the mud the dirt is removed should you inject effulgence in a diamond should you inject cluster to a diamond not required at all it already has it it possesses and you need not plead to the diamond that oh diamond why don't you be lustrous not required it is in effect lustrous atman has got immense knowledge unfortunately it is covered by this samsara it is covered in this body it is imprisoned in this body you need to remove the cover once the cover is removed atma is again effulgent it was ever but unfortunately it got covered this is realization this is the atma gnana which is a prerequisite to practice karma yoga what would happen by practicing karma yoga slowly that that paves the way to remove the cover it it effectively removes the cover so practicing karma yoga removes all the cover the cover is my karma papa punya roopa karma so my papas cover the atman and the atman is not brilliant it's not able to recognize that it is a part of brahman and its only mission is to reach the lotus feet of brahman it does not realize that slowly i learn the scriptures my preceptors teach me i to practice by all this by all this they remove the cover once the cover is removed atma realizes itself that it is subservient to paramatma its mission is to reach paramatma this is the knowledge required so you need a basic knowledge first without that knowledge nobody will come to practice karma yoga that knowledge is about the atman that is jnanamaya anandamaya atman is jnanamaya full of knowledge wisdom anandamaya it is full of bliss but we don't experience all those now we were for that only our nature is that but we are not able to experience that nature what we do now is only artificial if you want to be natural then nothing is going to affect you whether it is pain or pleasure it will all be equal to us so with this realization practicing karma yoga is swadharma swadharma jnana vairagya now i hope you get the meaning for all the three words swadharma is practicing karma yoga jnana without that jnana you won't start to practice karma yoga vairagya just practicing is not enough that does not suffice it is with detachment you need to practice you practice anything with detachment that gives the way to liberate for liberation you practice many with attachment then that only binds you again in this samsara so vairagya jnana swadharma all these are explained in the first six chapters krishna himself says that niyatam kuru karmatvam karma jyayo kya karmana ho oh arjuna do your duty that's prescribed to you niyatam kuru karmatvam tvam niyatam karma kuru karma is to be done think that realize that and keep doing your karma yoga fighting is karma yoga for arjuna did did gita shastra trigger did, did it uh, was it the cause for a big battle did it kill many he did not gita was born to re establish dharma that was the purpose of gita arjuna was a warrior he was a born kshatriya he was a king who had the duty to protect his kingdom so krishna advised arjuna go ahead with your duty will his duty which is fighting which is battling lead him to moksha it would because if i battle if i fight with a motive of enjoying the kingdom then that is not detachment so whatever we spoke now of swadharma jnana and vairagya just to super impose this in the current context the context is arjuna is being advised to fight how should arjuna be arjuna is only a body arjuna's atman is inside that atman has to perform its duty its duty is it has taken a birth of a kshatriya it has to fight and establish virtues it has to fight and establish dharma that is swadharma when you do that there needs to be a realization the realization is arjuna must realize that i am only this i am not this body as a kshatriya i have this body 
I need to perform my duty, but I am not performing. I am not the one who performs. It is because of this body I am made to perform. I need to exhaust my karma, so I perform. I am not this body. So Arjuna has to realize that when he fights. He can't fight thinking that I am Arjuna and fight. He must think that I have only taken the body of Arjuna. If, you, if I have to introduce myself to you, I should not tell that I am Krishna. It's wrong. Then what would I say? Everybody, they all say the same. You say I am Rama, I say I am Krishna. You say I am Varaha, you may say Padmanabha, I may say Narayana. We are not Narayana or Padmanabha or anybody. I am Atman. I am the Jivatma. I have taken a body which in this birth, which body in this birth is named as Krishna. I am not Krishna. Atman is not Krishna. I have only taken this body which is in this birth named as Krishna. Then who am I? I am an Atman. Don't you have a name? I have a generic name. I am a Seshabhuta of Paramatma. I am a subservient, subser- I am a servant of Paramatma. Seshabhuta. So I have a name and that name is common to all the Atmans. I don't have a specific name. You, the, the name which you have, I enjoy the same name. You are a Shesha Bhuta, a servant of Paramatma. I am also a Shesha Bhuta, a servant of Paramatma. If you realize this in this platform, then it's only equanimity. equanimity. There is no discrimination at all. You can't distinguish between two. There may be many Atmans, but all the Atman are alike. They are similar. Similarity in being Jnanamaya and Anandamaya. So Arjuna must realize that when he fights. So Dharma fighting for Arjuna. Jnana realizing that I am not just this body Arjuna. Bhishma is not this body Bhishma. Drona is not this body Drona. They are all much above. This is Jnana. Vairagya when he fights, he should not fight for any low human end. I battle, I would win this kingdom and enjoy this wealth. If you think so, it's not Vairagya. That is not detachment. So, performing your dharma with detachment is only karma yoga. Performing your dharma without detachment will only be karma. Mere karma. It would not transform to be karma yoga. Karma is different from karma yoga. Just practicing anything is karma. That's action. Whereas, if detachment and knowledge are added, this karma is embellished, enriched by detachment and knowledge, that transforms to be karma yoga. So, Krishna preached about karma yoga along with, even if I mention karma yoga, it's always with detachment and knowledge only. So, dharma, jnana, vairagya, sadhya. So, these were discussed in the first six chapters. Krishna says, Niyatam kuru karma tvam karma jayo Oh, Arjuna, do your duty. Karma jayo karmanaha. Karma yoga is always superior to jnana yoga. Karma jaya. Jaya is better, is superior. Karma jayo karmanaha. Akarma is not non performance. Akarma is jnana yoga. Karma jayo karmanaha. So, karma yoga is better to jnana yoga. Why? Would you all like to be a jnana yogi or a karma yogi? When we hear, hear the word jnana yogi, we are moved by that. We would all like to be. But unfortunately, Krishna says that none of you are capable of that. Including you, Arjuna, you cannot become a jnana yogi. A jnana yogi first has to control all his sensual organs, all his indriyas. We cannot. We, have still, we still allow them to loiter. They wander wherever they want to. For a karma yogi, it is not required, it's not a required condition that you control everything and then start practicing. So to a karma yogi, you can even control to an extent and start. The more, the, the more you, the, you progress spiritually, you progress in karma yoga, you can, you can control the indriyams totally. So you start with something which is better than nothing and practice karma yoga, you can control them totally. But for jnana yoga, you need to control before starting Jnana Yoga. So Krishna says that's not going to be possible, Arjuna. Arjuna is one who had controlled. He had a name, Guda Kesha. Krishna was known as Rishi Kesha. Arjuna was Guda Kesha. Gudaka is sleep. Guda Kesha, one who has won over his sleep. What more do we need? He has won his sleep. And Krishna says, you are incapable of Jnana Yoga. To a person who has already won sleep, 
if Krishna says that you are not capable of karma yoga, of jnana yoga, well, let's not talk about anything at all. So, you don't say that when you are listening to a discourse, if you feel sleepy, it is not just sleeping, it is called Brahmana Bhava. It has another word to it. If you feel not just sleeping, it is called Brahmana Bhava. It has another word to it. It's Brahmana Bhava. We all experience bliss. We are experiencing God, don't you? Of course, when you listen to Gita, you experience God. It can be for the listeners, of course. So, Dharma, Jnana, Jnana, Vairagya, Sadhya Bhakti. Krishna preached to Arjuna to practice his Karma Yoga in the first six chapters. Now, we are going to discuss in detail about Bhakti Yoga. Because that is the free way. That's the direct path that leads to liberation, to the lotus feet of Krishna. In the middle six chapters, 7th to 12th chapters, let us further classify them into two. Chapters 7, 8 and 9 talk about proper Bhakti Yoga. Chapters 10, 11 and 12, they are corollaries to Bhakti Yoga. Bhakti Yoga proper was explained, they were, Bhakti Yoga was explained in 7, 8 and 9. Arjuna wanted to develop Bhakti Yoga in himself. He questions Krishna, what should I know? So that I am able to easily develop Bhakti Yoga. Krishna listed his belongings, his properties, his wealth, his vast expanse, all his auspicious attributes. The list is 10th chapter. So what do we achieve by learning 10th chapter? We get attracted to Krishna. If I know that someone is a millionaire, he is a billionaire <laughs> and he owns a kingdom and he is a person who is so learned, he is so pious, he is so compassionate. The more I know better about him, the more I get attracted towards him. So, Krishna listed all these glories that was in 10th chapter. Arjuna never stopped with that. He requested, I would like to see your form with all this. That's why the 11th chapter, Vishwarupa Darshana was, whatever was listed by Krishna in the 10th chapter, he showed all those in his divine form. So, that was Vishwarupa Darshana. The vast expanse was Vishwa. Vishwa in his Rupa is Vishwarupa Darshana. Then in the 12th chapter, Krishna lists some marks, qualities to be followed by his bhakta. So let's leave aside 11th, 10th, 11th and 12th chapters because they were only consequential. They don't explain the proper bhakti yoga. So we have to restrict ourselves to 7th, 8th and 9th chapters. They are the crux now. They are very, very critical. Out of them, let's brush away 7 and 8. I am not going to, I am not capable of it, I should not, but still, we don't have much time. So, let us zero in on ninth chapter. You know why? Because Krishna started to reveal Bhakti Yoga in the seventh. He did not do so. He continued in the eighth. He never revealed. Then he came to the ninth. He didn't reveal till the last shloka. It was one shloka where he talked about Bhakti Yoga. Man Manabhava, Mad Bhakta, Madhyaji, Mam Namaskuru. Mame Vaishas Yuktaiva Matmanam Matparayanaha. That's the last verse. It's enough that we know this verse. But Krishna never stops with that. He, he is a story writer. He has these weekly magazines. Todarkade Lamari Kamali. In that magazine you will find in the Vara Idapati Salaparom. It won't come. I have to wait for the next week. They will again promise. We will of course talk about this subject this week. It never happens. This is all teases. We are teased, we are led, we are made to wait eagerly for the final. He committed to talk about Bhakti Yoga. He did not. Then what did he talk? It is like we, Upanyasakas, who will never talk on the subject. We will talk whatever we want to. Whatever comes to our mind. Krishna, of course, not, a, not an Upanyasaka like that. But he was so much impressed by his Bhakta. He wanted to talk about Bhakti Yoga. When we started... He remembered, he recalled all the glorious bhaktas. He could not stop praising them and appreciating them. So he spent the whole of 7th chapter in talking about the glory of bhaktas. It went away. He didn't talk about bhakti yoga. He only spoke, spoke about his bhaktas. You know why? The reason is, unless you know those who have practiced it, you won't get attracted to it. I must know whether someone has practiced, practiced this or not. If not, I won't venture. Because I can't, I know that I cannot. If I say that, yes, there are scores and scores of people who have already practiced Bhakti Yoga and reached Narayana, fine. Then it is okay with me. I am also willing to practice. I can't experiment for the first time. If something is established, then I am willing to follow. Yadhyad Acharati Shretta 
ತತ್ತದೇವ ಇತರೋ ಜನ ಸ ಯತ್ ಪ್ರಮಾಣ ಕುರುತೆ ಲೋಕಸ್ತದನುವರ್ತತೆ ದಿಸ್ ಲೋಕ ಫಾಲೋಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಹ್ಯೂಮನ್ ಫೋಕ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಫಾಲೋ ಯದ್ಯದ ಆಚರಿಸಿ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ದೇ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಸರ್ಚ್ ಫಾರ್ ನೋಬಲ್ ಸೋಲ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ದೇ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಅ ನೋಬಲ್ ಸೋಲ್ ದೇ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾಲೋ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಮಚ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆರಿಮೆಂಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ ಔಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಬೆಟರ್ ದಟ್ ವಿ ಫಾಲೋ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಥಾಟ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲಿಸ್ಟ್ ದ ಭಕ್ತಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಹವ್ ದೇ ಬಿಹೇವ್ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ವೇರ್ ದೇ ಇನ್ವಾಲ್ವ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ವ್ ಇನ್ ಮೀ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಆಲ್ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ ಹಿ ಗುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫರ್ಗೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಸೊ ಹಿ ಲಿಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅ ಭಕ್ತ ಅಂಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ಭಕ್ತಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಓವರ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಏತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಫರ್ಗಾಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಭಕ್ತ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟೆಡ್ ಥಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ಹಿ ಡಿನ್ ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ನಾಟ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಪಾತ್ ಬಟ್ ಹಿ ವೆಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ಲೈನ್ ದ ಡೆಸ್ಟಿನೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪಾತ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ವೈ ವೈ ಕಾಂಟ್ ಯು ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫೆಲ್ ಔಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಯೋಗ ದಿಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದೆನ್ ಗೋ ಟು ದ ಡೆಸ್ಟಿನೇಷನ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಫ್ರೆನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಟೇ ಟಾಕ್ ಟು ಯು ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ವೆನ್ ಐ ಪ್ರೀಚ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಯು ಐ ಗಿವ್ ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ದೇರ್ ವೆರ್ ಟೂ ಪಂಡಿಟ್ಸ್ ಟೂ ವಿದ್ವಾನ್ಸ್ ಬೋತ್ ವೆರ್ ನೈಬರ್ಸ್ ಐ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಹೌಸ್ ಎ ಹೋಮ್ ಎ ವಿದ್ವಾನ್ ಎ ಐ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಮ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ರೀಚ್ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ವಾಟ್ ಶುಡ್ ಐ ಡೂ ದಟ್ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಗೇವ್ ಮಿ ಬಿಗ್ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಡಿವೈಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ಡೇ ಇಂಟು ಫೈವ್ ಬಿ ಎ ಪಂಚಕಾಲ ಪಾರಾಯಣ ಪ್ರಾತಃ ಕಾಲ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಕಾಲಸ್ ಹಿ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ದ ಡ್ಯೂಟೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ಐ ಮಸ್ಟ್ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಅಭಿಗಮನ ಉಪಾದಾನ ಇಜ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಯೋಗ ಕಾಲ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸೇ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಆರ್ ನಾಳಿಗೇನು ಶುರು ಡೇ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಥರ್ಟಿ ನಾಳಿಗೇಸ್ ವಿ ನೌ ಟೆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಅವರ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಡಿವೈಡ್ ದಮ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಫೈವ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ಫೈವ್ ವಾಟ್ ಎವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೇಕ್ ದಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕೌಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾಲ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಭಿಗಮನ ಗೋ ಟುವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಉಪಾದಾನ ಕಲೆಕ್ಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಫ್ಲವರ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಯಾಂಡಲ್ವುಡ್ ಪೇಸ್ಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಕುಕಿಂಗ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫುಡ್ ಆಲ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರಿಕ್ವೈರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಪೂಜಾ ಇನ್ ದ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಕಾಲ ಪರ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ಪೂಜಾ ಟೋಟಲಿ ವಿತ್ ಆಬ್ಸಲ್ಯೂಟ್ ಡಿವೋಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಚಾಂಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ವೇದಿಕ್ ಮಂತ್ರಾಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ಪುರಾಣಾಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಕಾಲ ಯು ಮೆಡಿಟೇಟ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಅಸ್ಪೀಷಿಯಸ್ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಗೋ ಟು ಸ್ಲೀಪ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇ ಪ್ರಿಸ್ಕ್ರೈಬ್ ಅವರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಐ ಡೆಂಟ್ ಫೈಂಡ್ ಎನಿ ಟೈಮ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಟು ಜಾಬ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಯು ಟಾಕ್ ಎವ್ರಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಪೆರುಮಾಂಡ್ ವೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಮೈ ಟೈಮ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಗೋ ವರ್ಕ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಅರ್ನ್ ಯು ಸೆಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಾಸಿಬಲ್ ಇಫ್ ಯು ಇಫ್ ಯು ಜಸ್ಟ್ ವೈಲೇಟ್ ದಿಸ್ ಯು ವಾಂಟ್ ರೀಚ್ ವೈಕುಂಠ ಅವರ್ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹಿ ಕೇಮ್ ಔಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಹೌ ಹೋಮ್ ಬಿ ಟು ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಹೌಸ್ ಹಿ ವೆಂಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಐ ವುಡ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ರೀಚ್ ವೈಕುಂಠ ದ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಕ್ವಿಕ್ಲಿ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಹಿಮ್ ಡು ಯು ನೋ ವೇರ್ ವೈಕುಂಠ ಮಿಸ್ ಡು ಯು ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈಕುಂಠ our friend did not know then he explained the glory about vaikuntham archiradi marga the glorious marga and the place where we reach none the no pain or pleasure there we are amongst all the alvars and acharyas we are not born apahata papma vijaraha vimurtyuhu vishokaha vijagitsaha apipasa satya kamaha satya sankalpa there is no death any more no birth any more no old age problem no mental disease no physical disorders no no thirst we are not thirsty at all no h
then I would practice Bhakti Yoga. That is not the order. The order while preaching is the destination Vaikuntha first and then the practice Bhakti Yoga second. But the order while practicing it, practice Bhakti Yoga first and then only you reach Vaikuntha. So, in the, in, in the eighth chapter, he talked about the glorious Archiradi Marga and the path, the, the place where we reach. In the ninth chapter only, he explains about Bhakti Shastra. So, we can zero in on ninth chapter. We have crossed eight and we are not going to touch the balance nine. We have only the ninth chapter. Ninth chapter being the middle. If you touch the middle, you can assume that we have touched all the eighteen. So, the way to read, if you read the newspaper in the middle column only, you can easily read through the first and the last columns. There is a way to read your newspaper fast. You can also maintain the say in Gita, but don't ever forget all the nine chapters later on. Find time to read and go through them. In the ninth chapter, Krishna starts talking about Raja Vidya, Raja Gukyam. Oh Krishna, oh Arjuna, let me preach you this Raja Vidya, Raja Gukyam. You are so intimate to me. Thus, I have decided to preach you. This Gukyam, this is very, very secretive. This is very secret. Raja Vidya, the king of all Vidyas. Vidya is education, a path that leads to liberation. Vidya can also be termed as Upasana. Upasana, Bhakti, Dhyana, Vedana, all are synonymous. All these words are synonymous. Vidya, Raja Vidya, Raja Gukyam, Pavitramida Muttamam. This Raja Gukyam, the king of all secrets. Raja Vidya, the king of all studies. The king of all education is Bhakti Yoga. So I am going to teach that Bhakti Yoga to you. Having said that, Krishna did not immediately start talking about Bhakti Yoga. Again, he started revealing about himself. He says that, Maya tata midam sarvam jagadavyakta murtina Matsthani sarva bhutani Nachaham teshvavasthita Nachamatsthani bhutani Pashyame yoga maishwaram I am going to explain this meaning in depth now. It may be slightly difficult. So, you must be very aware now. Be, be very vigilant when you listen to this. After 10 minutes, I will tell you when you can relax. <laughs> Not now. When the plane passes through a rough weather, you have to sit. You can't walk. You have to belt yourself. You must tie your seat belt. So now, be, be, be vigilant. Krishna says that, Maya tata midam sarvam jagadavyakta murtina. I will explain to you first the meaning of this verse and why Krishna talks about this at all. Maya tata midam sarvam jagat. Idam sarvam jagat. This entire universe is permeated by me. Maya tatam. Bhagavan is found inside everything. So he permeates throughout this universe. Maya tatam idam sarvam jagat. Avyakta murtina. But you won't find me Arjuna. Avyakta murti is unrevealed form. He has no explicit form. It's not a physical form. Although he has, but when he permeates, he permeates without a form. Maya tatam idam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina. I am a murti. I have a form. But avyakta murti, which is not clear to us, which is not explicit to us, the unrevealed form, jagat avyakta murtina, matsthani sarva bhutani, all the bhutas, all the jivarasis, whether it is human being or deva, asura, manushya, what not, the sentient and the insentient, all, all are held by me. Matsthani, they are all placed in me. Bhagavan is the holder. All these are the held. I hold this. My palm holds. And this tape recorder is the held. Similarly, Bhagavan is the holder. He is the one who bears all this. And this is Chetana and Achetana. The sentient and the non-sentient. So the sentient and the non-sentient are held. Bhagavan is the holder. This is known as Dharya Dharaka Sammandha. Dharaka is Bhagavan, the one who holds. Dharya is what is held. Chetana and Achetana. Chit and Achit are held by Paramatma Ishwara. Matthani Sarvabhutani. All the beings are, are in me. They are found in me. Matthani Sarvabhutani. Nachaham Teshvavasthitaha. I am not found in them. Nacha Aham Teshu Avasthitaha. Be very, very careful and attentive in this. Nachaham Teshvavasthitaha. Teshu in all this. Na aham avasthitaha. I am not found. I don't reside. 
Krishna is known for his contradictions. He would just say in the previous verse about something, immediately contradict. And after explaining why he contradicted, again he would contradict. And it was on the job of our Purvacharyas to clear these contradictions. Virotha Pariharamu Pustakam Yajita. Whatever the Virothas, the contradictions were found in his Gita, we find Pariharam. Why he says so? After I explain, you will be amazed to know why Krishna said so. Nachaham Teshvavasthitaha. Matsthani Sarva Bhutani. Nachaham Teshvavasthitaha. Nachamatsthani Bhutani. Varjuna. Nachamatsthani Bhutani. None of these beings are found in me. Again, he contradicts this also. First, he said, I am perm- I, I permeate into everything. Then he said, I am not found in anything. He said, everything is held by me. Then he said, I am not a place for anything. Nachaham Teshvavasthitaha, Nachamatthani Bhutani, Pashyame Yoga Maishwaram. And this is my power. Varjuna, now realize my power. Arjuna thought, where to realize? So whatever you have told, I am totally confused. I am not able to realize anything. Kindly clarify. Krishna further clarifies it. Oh, Arjuna, you know why I gave you this and immediately retraced? Why I contradicted my own words? When I told you that I am found in everything, I permeate into everything, then who is the holder? Who is the held? When I said that everything is placed in me, then who is the holder and who is the held? I am the holder. My palm is the holder. This tape recorder is held. So, when we are all placed in Paramatma, we reside in Him, then He is the holder. We are all the held. We are the Dharya and He is the Dharaka. If you similarly think that we Bhagavan permeates into everything, then He would permeate into this tape recorder. He would permeate into me. He would permeate into you. He would permeate into this fan. Then who would be the held and who would be the holder? You may think that the fan is the holder. My body is the holder. Atman is the holder. And Paramatma is the held. Which is not the truth. Whether he is found everywhere or everything is found in him, the bhava never changes. The relationship never changes. He is the holder and we are all the held. So Krishna said, Mayatatam idam sarvam jagadavyakta murtina. I permeate it everything. Nachaham teshvavasthita. I am not found in them. He never says that absolutely I am not found in them. But he says, I am not found in them as you are found in me. You are found in me as I am the holder and you are the held. If I, if I make the same statement, if I reverse the statement, you would say that I am found in you so you are the holder and I am the held which is not so Arjuna, whether you are found in me or I am in you, whether you are placed on me or I am into you, I am the holder and you are the held. To make this clear, Krishna contradicted apparently. Maya tatamidam sarvam jagadavyakta murtina matsthani sarvabhutani nachaham teshvavasthitaha I am not found in them. Why so again? He says that they are not found in me, we are not found in them. There is another meaning attached to it. When I see that the tape recorder is held by me, physically I am able to see the relationship. That this recorder is held by this palm. There is a physical relationship. But when I made a statement that Krishna holds everybody, then I am not able to see the physical relationship between me and Krishna. Can I see? I cannot. I see that the chair only holds me or this four holds me. That's what I am able to visualize. More than that, I am not able to see Krishna holding me. So Krishna says, don't try to understand with an example, Arjuna. You may see many things that are held physically, but I don't hold you. I am not visible to your naked eyes, but still I hold you. How do I believe in it? Krishna gives an example. Alva says, Karanda palul neye pol. Karanda pal is milk to milk. Neye pol. But is, is he not a product of milk? It is. Can you see ghee in milk? I see ghee, uh, milk, but I can't see ghee. It's not possible. I am not able to see it with naked eyes. But if something is done, then I can get out ghee. What is to be done? A fermentation process is to be done. Churning is to be done. If these two things are done, then you get out ghee. Is sugar not a product of sugar cane? It is. But whenever you want to add sugar to milk or coffee, can you add pieces of sugar cane? It's not possible. Whenever you want to add ghee for halwa, can you add milk? 
and cook alwa not possible so the process we need to go through that process the process is ferment milk it turns to be curd churn it it becomes butter milk churn it again it becomes butter again you heat butter it melts to be it melts to be ghee so there is a big process there similarly for me to realize krishna who holds me it is not possible by this naked eye you need to go through a process that process is known as upasana in brihadaranyaka upanishad yagnyavalkya mentions that atma vare drashtavya shrotavya mantavya nididhyasitavya atma vare shrotavya first listen to him we saw four things fermentation churning heating there are three things there similarly if you have to realize paramatma who is within all within everything you need to go through this process first listen about him reflect about him meditate on him then you will be able to find him everywhere he is found everywhere but we are not matured enough we don't have the right instrument to see him we have these naked eyes which cannot see him alvar in tiruvaimuli says that mananaha malamara malarmesha yelutharum mananunar vadavilan poriyunar bavayilan mananaha malamara malarmesha yelutharum if all the impurity in this mind is cleared mananaha malamara we have dirt impurities in our mind if a carburetor is stuck if it's full of dirt petrol won't pass so you need to clean it uh, often we need to clean our mind this is like a carburetor where gnana has to pass petrol fuel has to pass but this this mind is so much of dirt we need to clean mananaha malamara malarmesha yeludhuram once of once all the dirt is clean the mind is pure malarmesha yeludhuram mananunar balavilan poriyunar bavayilan puri is our indriyas our sensual organs bhagavan is not assailable through our sensual organs he is beyond them he is assailable to your mind he is beyond that even yato vacho nivartante aprapya manasasah the vedas themselves accept defeat they say that we can't touch this brahmam yato vacho nivartante not by our speech ma nato vacho nivartante aprapya manasasah he is not touchable he is not accessible even to our mind so it's so difficult with a dirty mind we need to clean them once it's all cleaned then we can catch out of him then we can know him realize him so yagnyavalkya says atma vare shrotavya mantavya nididhyasitavya then lastly drashtavya similarly when when you see sugar in sugar cane and ghee in milk you will be able to see bhagavan in everything that is what the yogis achieved they achieved samadarshana they were able to find bhagavan everywhere prakhlada did so hiranyakashipu did not believe he said you don't, i don't find brahma anywhere no narayana anywhere whereas prakhlada promised yengumulan kannanendra mahanai kaind ingillayal niraniyan thoon vadaippa and appulude avanviya thonniyan chingappiran perumai aarayam sheermaitte alvar in one of his songs says that yengumulan kannan bhagavan is found everywhere this is the translation of alvar the true sanskrit to it is maya tadam idam sarvam jagat idam sarvam jagat maya tadam i permeate throughout this jagat i am found everywhere paranda tan paravayul neer thorum parandulan you know how he permeates not that he is found everywhere you take the droplets of water in an ocean bhagavan is found everywhere in the ocean it is just not so shri vedanta deshika further clarifies he is found everywhere in the ocean that does not mean that he is not found in every droplet of the ocean he is found inside every droplet it is such a small place will he not find it a, a discomfort he, he won't feel it comfortable to be in a small place deshika clarifies not at all if you go in the whole hall has only one gentleman and you tell him that the whole place is yours you can do whatever you want to here he will walk here he, he, he will he will sleep here for an hour there for an hour there for an hour enak sila samayam madras alla ponna train la ticket e kedaikad inga rock fort la sheeram edu ponna modari ponna na train ticket e kedaikad ore mala oru thara coach e gali compartment mulku uthrume illa appo na enna theriyum pannuvo na othan na barthu yaarume illa inga எனக்கு எத்தனை நாள் பர்த்து இல்லாத கஷ்டப்பட்டிருக்கேன் ஆனால் ராத்திரி பத்து மணியில் இருந்து பதினோரு மணி வரைக்கும் ஒரு படுத்துற படுத்துவேன் பதினோரு மணிக்கு நூறு படுத்துற படுத்துவேன் பன்னெண்டு மணிக்கு நூறு படுத்துற படுத்துவேன் ஐ ஐ டேக் வெஞ்சன்ஸ் ஆன் சம்படி ஐ டோன்ட் நோ ஹூம் பட் ஐ ஸ்டில் ட்ரை டு டூ தட் அதை போலே பகவான் மேன் ஹீஸ் இன்சைட் திஸ் ட்ராப்லெட் ஹீ இஸ் ஸோ ஃப்ரீ 
he feels as though he this entire universe to him how is that possible that is aghatita ghatana samartyam it's a power that bhagavan has and with that power whether it is such a small place or a large place be it surya mandala or vaikuntha or the ocean of milk shirabdi or a droplet of water he finds the same comfort everywhere parandatan paravayul neer dorum parandulan karanda silidan dorum edan dihal porul dorum karandengum parandulan he permeates into everything karandi engum parandulan everywhere and in every point in every small bit in every point of all objects anala he is found everywhere maya tatam idam sarvam jagad avyakta murtina mathani sarva bhutani na cha aham te shvavasthita arjuna said tells krishna yes i know that but many people do not you are so clear i also understand that you are within me but i don't think all have realized this krishna says many have not arjuna only a few have recognized me then what about others krishna blames them he says avajananti maam moodhah manushim tanu maashritam param bhavam ajanantah mama bhuta maheshwara i am the ishwara the controller master of all but they don't recognize me they only think me as a cowherd boy i took this form to be accessible to you unfortunately you did not recognize me avajananti maam moodhah these fools they never recognized me manushim tanu aashritam i have taken a human form but they have settled me with a human form it is not so ma moodhah manushim tanu aashritam param bhavam ajanantah they don't realize my supremacy they don't realize that i am ultimate god maam an avajananti maam moodhah manushim tanu aashritam param bhavam ajanantah mama bhuta maheshwara whether they realize or not arjuna the truth is i am the master they don't realize when will they realize arjuna questions krishna they would provided they prostrate to me and they are devoted to me and i help them to get released of this material bond krishna further says two important shlokas let's go through them satatam kirtayantah yatantascha dridavratah namasyantascha mam bhaktya nitya yuktaah upasate how to practice bhakti yoga now these shlokas are prelude to the final bhakti yoga shloka satatam kirtayanta sing chant about me always satatam kirtayanta subject put your tongue to proper use kirtayanta yatantascha dridavrataha with a steadfast mind they all practice bhakti yoga dridavrataha they have a resolute mind they have resolved to reach me yatantascha dridavrataha namasyantascha mam bhaktya he prostrates before me mam bhaktya nitya yuktaah they would always like to be in spiritual union with me nitya yuktaah upasate they practice bhakti yoga so to practice bhakti yoga all the three faculties must go operate you have three faculties manas vak and kaya manas is your mind vak is your speech kaya is your physical body all the three must go operate towards bhakti yoga namasyantascha mam bhaktya nitya yuktaah upasate namasyantascha mam bhaktya nitya yuktaah upasate satatam kirtayantah ananyas chintayanto mam ye janah paryupasate tesham nityabhiyuktanam yogakshemam vahamyaham ananyas chintayantah one who is fixed on me anyas chintayantah ananyas chintayantah he never thinks about anything else an anyas chintayantah anya chintayantah who think about many and also krishna ananyas chintayantah who think only about krishna ananyas chintayanto mam ye janaha those human beings paryupasate they realize about me they meditate on me they talk about me they sleep about me they laugh about me they eat about me the ananyas chintayanto mam ye janaha paryupasate tesham nityabhiyuktanam who would always like to be in union with me nityabhiyuktanam yoga kshemam vahamyaham i take care of their yoga and kshema i bless them with yoga and kshema what does this mean yoga and kshema you will find an emblem a writing yoga kshemam mahamyaham in india it's a big organization they took this as their motto as their logo yoga kshemam mahamyaham yoga kshemam now what we think is uh, is all your habits okay do you sleep well do you eat well is are, are you fine physically fit this is our yoga kshema but not this this is not the meaning in gita yoga is alabdhasya labha 
if you have not got what you ought to get till today you get it today that is yogam i am supposed to get this but i didn't get this till today now i have got it i am blessed with that that's yogam kshemam is having got it that should not wither away that should not leave you it should remain with you so retaining yogam is kshemam what is krishna talking about i have not bought a home till today today i bought so it is yogam and if the value does not go down i retain it it is kshemam can we say so it is yoga kshemam vaham yaham i bought a new home and i retain the home it's no foreclosure so yoga kshemam vaham yaham that is not here although the meaning is the same krishna never talks about a home here yoga till today i have not got brahmam in my hand in my mind yoga means getting him into my mind now i am blessed with brahmam with krishna bhakti that's yoga kshema means having blessed with that i must retain it that is kshema so yoga kshema vahamya i bless myself i grant myself to him arjuna then i ensure that i am retained with him yoga kshema vahamya to whom ananyas chintayanto mam ye jana paryupasate to all those who think only about me and practice bhakti yoga towards me ananyas chintayanto mam ye jana paryupasate tesham to all of them krishna never discriminates between them to all of them i treat them equally tesham the word is too generic it's too general it's a common word tesham satate yukta nam he never mentions there whether males or females or brahmana kshatriya nan anybody can be a bhakta tesham satate yukta nam yoga kshemam vaham yaham how would they be he is equal to all he says samoham sarvabhuteshu nyatva mam shanti murichasi i am equal to all name dveshyasti na priya name dveshya asti there is no one who is an enemy to me na priya i don't hate anybody name dveshyasti na priya i don't love anybody arjuna was surprised i hope you loved everybody krishna but you say here that i neither hate anybody nor love anybody krishna hastily concluded don't misunderstand arjuna samoham sarvabhuteshu whoever come and surrender to me i am equal to them note this meaning whoever come and surrender to me i am equal to all of them samoham sarvabhuteshu sarvabhuta it does not include abhaktas please note a point here a samoham sarvabhuteshu if you interpret sarvabhuta as to include ravana hiranyakashipu kumbhakarna vidura and everyone then the meaning would be samoham i am equal to all he is not equal to all he made arjuna to win he made duryodhana to lose so he is not equal to both then how can he make a statement that i am equal to all he is equal to all those who surrender to him he is not equal to a bhakta and an abhakta he is equal to all bhaktas you need to restrict the meaning there samoham sarva bhuteshu yatva no me as i am equal to all then what does this mean name dveshyasti na priya nan do i hate nan do i love name dveshyasti na priya that would mean it's a great interpretation by bhagavad ramanuja in his ramanuja bhashya he says name dveshya asti i don't hate anybody based on his caste or creed or education or wealth i don't love anybody based on his caste creed or wealth you need to add this now you have to qualify the statement so at that 10 people come and surrender to me and he is a brahmana he is a kshatriya he is learned he is not learned he is ignorant he is a millionaire he is a pauper if krishna loves this person because he is a millionaire and hates the other because he was a pauper then he is not equal to all krishna says that i do not love him because he is a brahmana i don't love him because he is a millionaire i don't love him because he is a pandit neither i don't hate him because he is a pauper i don't hate him because he is a kshatriya i don't hate him because he is a he is a pauper i don't so ip abbi vechinu once you qualify this statement it's not absolute name dveshyasti na priya yes there is none who my hate provided i don't hate anybody because they are low they are mean i don't love anybody because they are something great all are equal to me so if someone comes to surrender to me i treat them all equally samoham sarvabhuteshu anamedveshyasti na priya 
So neither do I hate them nor do I love them. I don't love them because they are great. I don't hate them because they are mean. I treat them all equally. Ananyas chintayanto maam ye janak paryupasate tesham nityabhiyuktanam yoga kshemam vaham yaham. O Arjuna, in case they don't realize or recognize me, they don't recognize me as the one who has just incarnated with this human form. Arjuna, you would be shocked to note that there are many people who say that I am a great punyatma and I am able to do all these miracles as a result of my punyams. When I lifted this Govardhanagiri, people thought it is some miracle which I am doing. I am not a punyatma to do all this. They thought the, uh, the person's punyam has so much ripened, it is so much matured that he is able to tame Kalinga, he is able to lift Govardhana. You see so many powerful people because as a result of their punyam. I am not a punyatma here. I am beyond papam and punyam. But they don't recognize me rightly. Moghashaha, Mogha karmana, Mogha jnana, Vicheta saha, further Bhagavan condemns them. Moghashaha, those who don't recognize me as the one dwelling, residing in them, as the Parabrahman was incarnated so that I am easily accessible to them. If they don't realize all this, Moghashaha, all their desires would be wasted, undesirable. They, their desires are not going to be fulfilled at all. Moghashaha, Mogha Karmana, all their actions go waste. I do something. I perform Sandhyayana thrice a day. With, with absolute devotion I do. But I don't believe in God. Then what would happen? I don't believe in the mantra, but I perform, I chant that mantra for 108 times every day. It's of no use at all. So it's Mogha Karmana. All their actions are wasted. Mogha Shaha. Their desires are never fulfilled. Mogha Karmana. All their actions get wasted. Mogha Jnana. Their realization, knowledge itself is wasted. What do I know? I know that this is a microphone. I know that this is a tape recorder. I know this is floor. I know this is carpet. I know all of you by your name. Fine. But this is of no use at all. Deshika mentioned, This knowledge, this education is used for nothing. We may be doctors, we must be PhDs in MS and what not. But unless you recognize Brahman, none of these studies will come to your help. Adi Shankara Bhagavad Pada said that, Govindam bhaja mudhamate nahi nahi rakshati dhukrum karane The grammar and poetry which you learn will not come to your rescue at all. It is only Govinda Nama Sankirtanam that will come to your help. Nahi nahi rakshati dhukrum karane mogha shaha mogha karmanaha mogha jnanaha vicheta saha They are not realized at all. They are not enlightened. So don't do that way. Don't go their way. Mogha shaha mogha karmanaha mogha jnanaha Vicheta Saha. Arjuna asked Krishna, then what should I do? I realize that you are Parabrahman, but you have incarnated and taken this simple form. What should I do? You perform bhakti. That's what I have been asking Krishna. How to practice bhakti yoga? Krishna explains patram, pushpam, phalam, toyam, yome bhaktya prayachati. Tadaham bhakti pakritam, asnami prayatatmanaha. This is a glorious shloka. Patram, leaves. Pushpam, flowers, phalam, fruits, toyam, water, simple pure water. Patram, pushpam, phalam, toyam. Yome bhaktya prayachati. Offer these to me. If not all the four, at least one. Patram, pushpam, phalam, toyam. Yome bhaktya prayachati. But when you offer, don't feel haughty, don't feel lofty. Be humble when you offer anything to me. Bhaktya, with pure devotion, you offer them to me. Bhaktya prayachati. Tadaham bhakti upagritam, all that is offered to me with bhakti, ashtnami, I consume, I enjoy them. Ashtnami prayatatmanaha, I immediately accept them. You go and offer chakrapangal to Purumar, he accepts. You offer a red cloth to him, he accepts. You say it's only green cloth today, he of course happily accepts. He may be wanting to have Kuliyodari today, you may offer chakrapangal. He never denies. He may want to wear a white cloth today, you may only adore him. You may decorate him with a green cloth. He never denies. He accepts whatever you give. Provided that's with pure devotion. If he finds that it is not with devotion, he never he, he never thinks for a while even. He may allow it. He gives a long rope. 
till you mend your ways. If you do not mend your ways and you, you only practice bhakti for a show off, as though that my bhakti should be known to all, just for fame. Per tum pohil ka hamattum bhakti yogam pannal, konjanal ututu, yapa talla tattnumo tallur. Analadha, tadaham bhakti padhritam asnami prayatatmanaha. There are many people who have followed this. Patram, pushpam, phalam, toyam. It is so simple. It's very, almost valueless. Is it going to cost anything to get a leaf to Pirumat? Pushpam. Is it great Pushpam? Shandaha Pushpam Ayana Kude, it may cost to be his chen, a flower. But that's not required. Tiruman Gyalwar in one of his portions says that Kallar Thudayam, Kanavadarum, Kuvadayam, Mullar Mullariyam, Ambalam Mun Kandakkal, Pullai Vore Enamai Putkadandan Ponnadi Kendru, Ulladhar Ullattai Ullamak Kullomi. Whenever you go to a flower market, whatever flower you see, immediately think that this will be great in the neck of Thirumal or it will be great in a lotus feet. Think so at least. You see an ornament, it will be good if I offer it to Thirumal. Nahapatnam is Saundar Raja Thirumal. He himself has Saundar, he is Saundarya Raja Thirumal. It's beauty in him, it's charm in him. Ponnivar meni maradahattin pungilan chodhi ahalat taham. Minnivar vayil nal vedamodum vediyar vanavar avar tholi. Yennayin nokki, yen nalgulum nokki, yen dilam kongayin nokki dhinna, annayin nokki men nanji dhinna, yen acho, uruvar arahiya va, what a beauty, what a charm he possesses. Apri na che, when you see any ornament, immediately think of him, offer it to him. We refuted, we told Alva, no, whenever I see a bunch of flowers, or I see a necklace, a gold, a, a diamond studded necklace, Immediately, my wife only comes to my mind. <laughs> not the Saundar Raja Pirumal, not your Shavu Shavari Pirumal, not Ranganatha Pirumal. What do I do? Alva said, please go through the song correctly. Read again. Kallar, Thudayam, Kanavadaram, Kuvadayam, Mullar, Mularayam, Ambalam, Kandakkal, Pullai, Or Enamai, Pukkadandan, Ponnadikken, Ulladhar, Ullattai, Ullamak, Kullome. When you see an ornament, a jewelry, think that it is to be offered to Pirumal, but offer it to your wife. <laughs> Think that it is to be offered to Pirumal. Ulladar, Ullattai, Ullamak, Pullome. Nanekkiradu the Pirumal, the Nanachuko, Vangi, Arko, Portugo. Nakekeve, Kadeshi Baksha, Nanekkiradu the Yana Pirumal, the Nanakanamulu. You think that you are all going to offer it to Pirumal. You may not offer it to him even. But still, he only recognizes that, that my devotee thought whether he does it or not, he is not bothered. Yeah, now why, why is he not bothered? Because he is not going to add value to himself by his necklace. If you offer it to your wife, we think, we, we, it's a wishful desire that we become beautiful. It's only a wishful desire. It's thinking. We never become beautiful by this Abharana. Perumal kur perundu. Abharana ngalukka alaku kodukkum perumal. We all try to become beautiful with the jewelry. Whereas this jewelry becomes beautiful on him. When he wears, when he is decorated with jewelry, it is the jewelry that is benefited, not him. In fact, Pirumal Gedigitirima Avaranangalna Podro, our Adaha Parakirthu, Utra the Gilla. It is to reduce his beauty, we decorate him with all ornaments. Urkoda the Rumba Adaharthuna Chinga, Dritti Dosham Patuda Pudadun, two moody moody which mo. And the Pola Pirumal Kirkar Adakirk, Yar Kanan Patuda Pur, the Engar the Kaha Moody which grow. So it doesn't mean that he expects this from us, but he expects us to offer it to him, to at least think that I offer it to him. Kandar, Thudayam, Kanavadaram, Kuvadaram, Mullar, Mularyam, Ambalam, Kandakka, let it be any flower. Flower costing rupees 10 or flower costing Athana or flower costing rupee 1, anything. There was one Acharya by name Sri Parashara Bhatta. He was the son of an illustrious father, Kurat Talma. Nanjir was the disciple of Sri Parashara Bhatta. Nanjir went and questioned. He raised a doubt to Parashara Bhatta. I have heard in the Shastra that Na Kantakarika Pushpam Devaya Niveda Yet. Bhagavan has barred Kantakarika Pushpam to be offered to him. There is a variety of flower known as Kantakarika. He says, I don't accept that. Nanjir questions Parashara Bhatta. Maybe it is just worthless. That's why Bhagavan has barred it from being offered to him. So, see, there is a discrimination. He says, I don't accept mean flowers. I only accept 10 rupee flower. Does he not say so? Parashara Bhatta gave a quick reply. There are many thorns in the plant of Kantakari Kapushpam. When a Bhakta goes to pluck and wreath a garland, the thorn will, of course, our Kutada, will he not bleed? Adhikaha, 
he denied the kantakarika pushpam itself he didn't want to accept that now you must think whether rose is acceptable or not then ma shastra mention about kantakarika the same problem is with rose flowers also pandama an theriyad andare bhagavan ki he never discriminates between a worthy non worthy flowers for him a bhakta must not pain he must not bleed he must not feel pain so avarku mullu kutira porade engadukaga pushpame vaanda anta so that is the love and affection which krishna shavas on his bhakta satatam kirtayanta yatantascha dridaprata to those patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati so go and offer to him with pure mind andal says tuya perunir yamunai thuraivan this perini is tuya perini why is yamuna pure nammalvar in one of his songs in tiruvirutham he says that chootinan malagal tuyana vendi ninnorgal nanniraatti chootinan malagal tuyana vendi tuya malai is again pure flowers i am going to tell you a short story about malakara malakara was in mathura pattana bhagavan krishna after living in gokula and vrindavana for 10 years he returns to mathura mathura nama nagari punya papahari shubha mathura is a glorious place the mention of the name mathura will clean you of all your papas mathura nama nagari punya papahari it clears you it dispels all the papas so krishna returns to mathura after 10 years he is going to fight and kill his maternal uncle kamsa he is going to fight but he wanted to get decorated he went to malakara he is going to only a battle he is not going to a wedding he is going to a battle but still krishna went to malakara to decorate himself with flowers he went to kuni trivakara kuni to wear good clothes to wear chandana to smear himself with chandru place then he went to a dobi he went to a washerman and he requested for good clothes from him first he goes to a washerman he got, he, he he started wearing good clothes he wore good clothes then he went to malakara malakara was a very 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 poor person he was wreathing garlands offering it to kamsa and earned a paltry sum and that day the shop was over he was not left with any more except for some few flowers there was no garlands available with him there were only few flowers that are left over krishna suddenly knocked at the door of malakara malakara panicked he became restless he didn't expect krishna he was shocked and that was a pleasant shock for him he immediately pleaded to krishna prasada paramau nathau mama geham upagatau dhanyoham archayishyami ityaham alyoba jeevanah ityah das malakara pleaded to krishna prasada paramau nathau o oh krishna you descended to this material world which itself is surprising you need not have because this is discomfort to you but you compromised on that after reaching this world why did you choose mathura why did you again go to gokulam why did you return to mathura and why did you forget all the big roads in mathura and choose this small lane and why did you leave the palaces in this small lane and choose my hut you have chosen prasada paramo nathau it only talks about your compassion towards me mama geham upagatau you have come to my residence which is no malihai which is no palace it is just a small residence but i have a large heart krishna my mind is large enough to offer everything to you prasada paramau nathu mama geham upagatu dhanyoham archayishyami i am blessed i am fortunate let me perform puja to you he had nothing with him he just collected those four five flowers and offered it to perumal perumal turned them all to golden flowers dhanyoham archayishyami ityaham alyopa jeevanah this is one important story you all know the story of vidura vidura the great he offered the peeled skins of banana to krishna he forgot when he saw krishna he couldn't realize himself he didn't know anything he forgot everything he offers not bananas but skin the skins of bananas krishna at 1 2 3 4 5 6 suddenly vidura remembered what an offense i have committed let me change let me correct myself he took a banana now he peeled the skin and he remembered to drop the skin in the dustbin then he offered the banana krishna denied i am my my thirst and my hunger is quenched i am no more hungry i don't want to consume anything more vidura said i this is the first time i am giving you a proper banana why don't you eat <laughs> krishna refused telling that neither this banana nor this skin yenoda pasi ad rendu me thikapurudille my my thirst or my hunger are not going to be quenched by these 
பட் எது தெரியுமா என்னுடைய அங்கரை தீத்துது எது என்னோட பசியை தீத்துதுன்னா நான் வந்திருக்கேன்னு உடனே என்ன பண்றேன்னே தெரியாத கலங்கி போய் ஒரு பக்தியை காட்டினவர் அந்த பக்தி தான் என் பசியை தீத்துதே தவிர நாட் யுவர் பனானா ஆர் யுவர் ஸ்கின்ஸ் இட் இஸ் ஒன்லி தட் பக்தி இ பிகேம் ஹி பேனிக் இட் இஸ் தட் பேனிக்கிங் பக்தி தட் ஃபீட்ஸ் கிருஷ்ணா ஹி நெவர் ஃபீட்ஸ் ஆன் சக்கர பொங்கல் தத்யோனம் ஆர் எனிதிங் ஹி ஃபீட்ஸ் ஆன் த பக்தி தட்ஸ் அண்டர் லைன் இப்போ தெர் இஸ் ஒன் ஸ்டோரி மறுநாள் கூடார வில்லும் ஷீர் கோவிந்தா இன் மார்கழி மந்த் டியூரிங் திருப்பாவே எவ்ரி சாங் ஹேஸ் இட்ஸ் ஓன் சிக்னிஃபிகன்ஸ் இன் டர்ம்ஸ் ஆஃப் மீனிங் அண்ட் பிரசாதம் If it's Karavahal Pinshan, it is Dadyodhanam. If it is Mundu Madhahalitthan, it is Pudihodharai. If Kudara Vellim Shir Kovinda, it is Chakra Pongal. The Chakra Pongal Marnal Pannanam. They have called, this, this husband and wife, they were very poor. They had called for many devotees for the next day morning. You have to cook Chakra Pongal at 5.30 am and distribute at least 50 people. It's going to cost money. Night, when they were about to sleep, The wife asked, have you called anybody, invited anybody tomorrow? Yes, I have invited 50. To 50, how much should we cook? At least 2 liters of rice. You need to cook. You cook 2 liters of rice. How much ghee would you require? At least 2 and a half kilos. How much of cashew? For each grain of rice, one cashew nut. Then, how much of cashew? 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 பாதாம் பருப்பு எவ்வளவு போகணும் ஒரு திராட்சைக்கு ரெண்டு பாதாம் அப்படி போட்டோம்னா சக்கர பொங்கல் நல்லா இருக்கும் இதை வாங்கறதுக்கு இட் காஸ்ட் எம் அட்லீஸ்ட் டூ த்ரீ தௌசண்ட் ருபீஸ் அண்ட் தே ஸ்போக் அபவுட் திஸ் டில் மிட் நைட் தே கண்டினியூ டில் டூ ஏஎம் இன் த மார்னிங் தே ஸ்லெப்ட் தே காட் அப் அட் ஃபைவ் ஓ கிளாக் தே டுக் தேர் ஹோலி பாத் கேம் டு கிருஷ்ணா ஆஃபர் த ஹோலி பேசஸ் டு ஹிம் அண்ட் டோல்ட் ஹிம் டேக் திஸ் அஸ் கேஷ்யூ நட் டேக் திஸ் அஸ் பாதாம் டேக் திஸ் அஸ் திராட்சை take this as chakra pongal because this is what i have i have nothing else but you know when krishna ate that chakra pongal not when these people offered it to him he ate when they were talking about that eppadi pannanum eppadi pannanum eppadi pannanum when they discussed the recipe krishna ate he became happy just by listening to that recipe ena appa na it was devotion it was it was true devotion that krishna is happy with and not the real chakra pongal enal inda chakra pongal avarku pudusille inda mundri parpu pudusille ida sritti chadam avarku pudusille all this are quite old to him but what he expects is what he does not possess let's offer him what he does not has he has everything cashew nut to badam parpu illadilla avarte irukku ana avarte enna illa yosich paarunga he has no bhakti 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 towards krishna can be in my mind only it cannot be with him but krishna can be krishna he can't be krishna bhakti i can be krishna rama or govinda i can have krishna bhakti can krishna have krishna bhakti he cannot avar edathana nama dhaan bhakti panna mudiyume devara avarita bhakti irukuma so he has no bhakti uh, this is a statement now he has no bhakti it is true na na yaari blame pannale po kannan edathala bhakti irukka mudiyade krishna bhakti namakitta dhaan irukka mudiyume devara kannan edathala irukka mudiyuma so we should offer something which he does not possess he has no krishna bhakti so i offer krishna bhakti to him if i offer chakra pongal he has pongal he has dadyanam he has let me offer that devotion the true devotion which is what is eagerly waiting for anale vidurana pati when vidura offered the skins of banana vedavyasa immediately appreciates him he tells vidura samahamati samsprashan nasanam shaurehe vidura samahamati here is the most learned vidura is he learned if this is told to us we will say he was a fool he didn't even know how to offer banana properly to krishna so is he alone at hey, a yes kana namballa solikiradhe illena engalukku evlo teluva irukku paarunga sariya vaala pala teduppom thora uri chikkira koduvu vaala pala ma kudupa anda teluvu kuda vidura telliyena adanal dhaan nam ipdi irukom avar apdi irukkar adu therinjikonum alle nam ipdi katta pottirukkume vidura teluva illena illa kalangina tam bhakti if you are not confused you are not a bhakta any bhakta is just absorbed in krishna and so confused we are all confused about material world but they are confused about krishna they are in spiritual longing they they are not able to bear the pangs of separation with krishna they get confused whereas we materialistic materially we get confused anal in the confusion irukravan bhakta nille vidurana pola bhakta na irukka vendum prakladha he didn't even think for a while he pointed his finger inga irkar karuma அண்ட் என்ன நம்பிக்கையில் அவனால் கை காட்ட முடியும் 
when i suddenly show point my finger do i know whether he is inside or not he believed it to be true whatever he learned from the scriptures he just believed we listen for the sake of listening but we don't believe tamil or paatu vettu thiruvarangara thampanitha meimai peruvarthai uttu sitthar kattru par andas naachiyar thirumuli song thiruvarangara thampanitha meimai peruvarthai vittu chittar kettirupar whatever are the preachings of number 1 ranganatha vittu chitta the father of andal vittu chittar kettirupar would have listened to it the kettirupar natta pirikanu neenga poi avaru upanyasam kettirukila kettirke kettirkeel kettu adan padi irukila adu theriyadhu swami kettu kettrukom is different from kettu irukirom irukirom na is putting it to practice கேட்டு ஜஸ்ட் லிசனிங் டு இட் ஆனால் அது புரியாதம் இல்லையா கேட்கணும் கேட்கபடி இருக்கவும் போனோம் இல்லையோ ஸோ அவிதரா இன் ஃபேக்ட் பிராக்டிஸ்ட் பிரகலாதா பிராக்டிஸ்ட் இ பிலீவ் இ லேர்ன் ஃப்ரம் த ஸ்கிரிப்சர்ஸ் இஸ் பகவான் அஸ்பர்மியட் எவ்ரி வேர் இஸ் சர்வவியாபகா இ பிலீவ் டிம் டு பி சர்வவியாபகா ஸோ வேன் கிவன் அ சான்ஸ் இ ஷோல் தட் ஹியர் இஸ் இப்ப நம்ம என்ன சொல்லுவோம்னா உபன்யாசம் முடிகிற வரைக்கும் சர்வவியாபகம்னு சொல்லுவோம் ஆனா பெருமாளுக்கு இருக்கா இங்க எல்லாம் அப்படின்னு உடனே இப்பதான் உபன்யாசம் சர்வ வியாபி அது உபன்யாசம் அத போய் நாம சொல்ல முடியுமா சோ இந்த டிஃபரன்சியேஷன் திஸ் இஸ் வாட் வி வேர் வி கோ ராங் வாட் எவர் வி லிசன் டு வாட் எவர் வி ஸ்டடி வி மஸ்ட் ஆல்சோ ட்ரை டு பிலீவ் இன் தெம் ஏன்னா நம்முடைய ஸ்கிரிப்சர்ஸுக்கு அவ்வளவு பவர் இருக்கிறபடியாலே வி மஸ்ட் ட்ரை டு பிலீவ் பத்திரம் புஷ்பம் பலம் தோயம் யோமே பக்தியா பிரயச்சதி யோமே பக்தியா பிரயச்சதி அண்ட் ஹீ கேன் ஆஃபர் எனி திங் பத்திரம் நாட் ஓன்லி கிரே பேசல்ஸ் பத்திரம் எனி லீவ்ஸ் புஷ்பம் எனி ஃபிளவர் பத்திரம் புஷ்பம் பலம் எனி பிளான்டன் எனி ஃப்ரூட் தோயம் இஃப் யூ டோன்ட் ஃபைன் எனி ஆஃப் திஸ் அட்லீஸ்ட் பார்ட் ஆஃப் வாட்டர் பத்திரம் புஷ்பம் பலம் தோயம் யோமே பக்தியா பிரயச்சதி த டெஸ்ட் இஸ் நாட் த வேல்யூ ஆஃப் தட் ப்ராடக்ட் not the value of the offering some would offer apples when you go to divadesham when you go to yatra on a pilgrimage we go and offer apple apple would have cost 10 rupees another would offer a banana it would cost 1 rupee the archaga swami he would be confused there are too many people who have gathered around there so in the end he would take apple he would take from another banana he would offer it to perumal when he returns he may change whoever gave apple may get a banana in return whoever gave banana offered banana you would get an apple and immediately i'll start yelling patru rupa kudutha apple na kudutha ad eppadi vaaya pora thirupi kudutharna this is fine it's 10 rupees before it was offered to perumal this is 1 rupee before it was offered to perumal but after it was offered to him it has only one name bhagavat prasadam it has no name or discrimination between 10 rupees and 1 rupee if you further discriminate it is not pure love of action at all அதனால பத்திரம் புஷ்பம் பலம் தோயம் யோமே பக்தியா பிரயச்சதி யூ காண்ட் அல்யூர் பகவான் வித் எனி கிரேட் ஆஃபரிங் ஹி இஸ் நாட் யூ காண்ட் அல்யூர் ஹிம் பட் யூ கேன் அல்யூர் ஹிம் யூ கேன் ஈவன் மிஸ் கைட் வித் யுவர் பக்தி வித் யுவர் பியோர் பக்தி யூ கேன் ஈவன் மேக் பகவான் ஃபாலோ யூ ஒரே ஒரு இடம் மட்டும் சொல்றேன் இப்போ பத்திரம் புஷ்பம் பலம் தோயம் எதை வேணா கொடுக்குறாங்கிற மாதிரி இல்லையோ பகவான் ஸ்ரீ கிருஷ்ணா வாஸ் சப்போஸ் டு கம் அஸ் பாண்டவ தூதா த நெக்ஸ்ட் டே Dhritarashtra was discussing with uh, Vidura and Sanjaya. Dhritarashtra wanted to draw Krishna to his side. Yappume, you find a powerful opponent, don't leave him there. Pay something and get him to his side. This is why we are going to talk about it. If you are not going to talk about it, we will talk about it. If you are not going to talk about it, we will talk about it. 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 So Dhritarashtra wanted to draw Krishna will krishna switch sides vidratta vidrana paathu kekkara vidratta said let me offer him 10 grams let me offer him 100 cows let me offer him at least 1000 gold coins will krishna switch sides vidra said what do you want to offer to him 10 villages vidra irukku sirikiradha alargam theriyala vidratta paathu sonnar idala 5 gramatha kuduthiyana kannan vandirukave vaadame andha budhiye avanukku krishna is 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 acting as a messenger he is coming as a pandava duta because dhritarashtra denied even giving 5 grams now he is willing to bribe 10 grams but he was not willing to part with 5 grams to pancha pandavas ipdi irundhu odane pakkathula nu sadhyam sonnar one idu varaikum velikkannu mattum da theriyadhu nanichinde ipo da gnana kannu illa nu theriyadhu you don't have either a naked eye gnana kannum illa oona kannum illa then how can i make krishna switch sides vidrakar kekkar vidrakar adathile 
Vidura replied, Oh Sanjaya, tell him, whatever Krishna is allured of, when you keep something as a bait, Krishna falls prey to it, and that is Padhyam Abhigama Chaiva Sneha Sandarasana Cha. You offer a pot of water, light a lamp, open your door, open your mind, and with a smiling face invite him, welcome him to come to your home, prostrate before him, offer your obeisances, and plead to him, I am no way capable of receiving you, Krishna, but somehow you chose to grace me. If you say so, he is moved by that. Nothing, not by anything else. Anyat Purnat, Apam Kumbhad, Anyat Padavale Janat, Anyat Kushala Samprasnat, Nanarikya, Un Tirvadikali Vidav Kattapati, Yam Vidunoki Vandha, Idakana and Nabhagya Mandirkeno, Urunala Yangata Kadayade, Niyadika Hika Vande, these words only make them switch sides. Not all your offerings. Anale Yata Pandronga the Mukyamale, Ana Yapudi Pandonga the Mukya. Is it with true devotion you offered to him? Anaradan Kandan Patram Pushpam Palantoyam, Yome Bhaktiya Prayachati, Tadaham Bhakti Bhagratam, Ashnami Prayatatmanaha, and he promises to eat them. Whatever you offer, I enjoy. Patram, Pushpam, Palam. You offer fruit to me, I eat. You offer water to me, I drink. You offer Patram to me, I wear them. You offer Pushpam to me, I decorate myself with those Pushpams. Patram, Pushpam, Palam, Toyam, Yome. Let it be anybody. Bhaktiya Prayachati. But with pure devotion, if he offers to me, Tadaham Bhakti Pagratam. Anything that is offered to me with devotion, Ashtnami, I consume. Consume does not mean that you will consume all because you can't consume Pushpam. It's only enjoying them. Tadaham Bhakti Bhagatam Asnami Prayatatmana. Having said all this, Krishna slowly progressed towards the last verse where he mentions the real Bhakti Yoga. Man Mana Bhava, Mad Bhaktaha, Mad Yaji, Mam Namaspuru, Mame Vaishas Yuktaiva, Matmana, Mat Parayanaha. I am the destination to my Bhakta, Parayana, the ultimate destination, end. I am the Parayana. I am the ultimate destination to my Bhakta. Manmanabhava. Manmanabhava. Your mind must be focused on me. Manmanabhava. Mat Bhaktaha. Love me. You must be so fond of me. Mat Bhaktaha. Mat Yaji. Perform all penances towards me. Mam Namaskuru. Prostrate dufa towards me. Manmanabhava. Mat Bhaktaha. Mat Yaji. Mam Namaskuru. Mame Vaishyasi. And that person reaches me. Mame Vaishyasi. He attains me. Atmanam Matparayanaha. He practices. He really educates his manas to reach me and finally reaches me. Yat Karoshi, Yat Ashtnasi, Yat Juhosi, Dadasiyas, Yat Tapasati Kaunteya, Tat Kurushva Madarpanam. Whatever you do, think this and do. Yat Karoshi, whatever you do. Yat Ashtnasi, whatever you consume, whatever you eat. Yat Karoshi, Yat Ashtnasi, Yat Juhosi. Whatever penances and offerings you give, yet juhoshi, dahadasi, generously whatever you share, dadasi, dana menna kudukuriyo, yet, yet tapasyasi, whatever austerities you practice, yet juhoshi, yet karoshi, yet ashtnasi, yet ashtnasi, yet ashtnasi, yet kuroshi, yet ashtnasi, yet juhoshi, dahadasi, yet, yet tapasyasi kaunteya, tat kurusha madar panam, offer all towards me. Offer them to me and keep practicing karma yoga. You practice karma yoga with absolute detachment that leads you to bhakti yoga. As a bhakta, you would again offer everything to me. So Krishna says that bhakti is the essence of Gita. Bhakti eka gocharaha narayana. And bhakti is not that difficult to practice. It is only re-channelizing our all sensual organs. Thinking about him, prostrating to him, offering flowers to him and doing all that would please him, abstaining from all that would displease him. That's what you want to say. If you say it, you say your bhakti matures to reach you, to attain you to Shiva Kuntha, which is ultimate bliss, moksha. In the ninth chapter, Krishna started revealing about himself that he is the one who permeates into everything. And then adds on, and this is not realized by many Arjunas. They don't recognize me as the omniscient, as the one who is omnipresent. They only think me as a cowherd boy. And what happens to them? He blames them. He condemns them. Moga shaha, moga karmana, moga jnana, vichetasa. One who realizes that Bhagavan is in me, how does he practice? How does he behave? 
अनन्या चिंतयो मां ये जना प्रतिपाते तेषा निभियुक्ता योगक्षेम वहाम्यहम टू दोस् डिवोट सोल्स वाट विल कृष्ण आफर योगक्षेम वहाम्यहम ई ग्रांट मई सर्व टू दे एंड एंश्योर दट ऐम रीटेन्ड इन दे If so, what happens to that person? Then he refocuses all his sensual organs on Bhagavan and offers either patram, pushpam, phalam, toyam with pure devotion. And Krishna consumes them as as a return, as a reciprocation. He grants them moksha, and that moksha is mentioned in the last verses: Man mana bhava, mad bhakta ha, mad yaji, maam namaskuru, maam evaishyasi. Now, is it not clear that reaching Shiva Kuntam, reaching Narayana, is the ultimate? That's your destination. Narayana ha param brahma gita shastre samirita. Kindly recall the verse, the shloka of Yamuna Chadya, which I mentioned to you at the beginning of this discourse. Gita shastre samirita ha Narayana ha param brahma. Not only Narayana. How is Narayana attained? Bhaktiye ka bo chala ha Narayana ha. Man mana bhava mat bhakta ha mat yaji maam namaskuru. How do you practice bhakti yoga? How are you led to bhakti yoga? So dharma jnana vairagya sadhya bhakti. भक्ति एक गोचर नारायण गीताशास्त्रे समीरिता सो दिस इज द एसेंस ऑफ भगवदगीता आई प्रेड लॉर्ड कृष्ण आडवर्स एंड आचार्य टू ब्लस अस ऑल विद दट प्योर भक्ति लेट अस बी ब्लस्ड विद दट प्योर भक्ति प्रैक्टिस इट एंड नॉट एक्सपेक्ट एनीथिंग इन रिटर्न जस्ट प्रैक्टिस भक्ति फॉर द जॉय ऑफ प्रैक्टिसिंग भक्ति लेट भक्ति नॉट लीड अस्ट एनी वेर एज कृष्ण से let bhakti be our destination be our end let's not expect anything in return for bhakti you practice bhakti he would take care he would certainly lead us to salvation with these words i conclude today's session i hope you are you, you are able to carry some message home with these words i thank you all for attending i thanks the the authorities of this temple for having provided us with this place our gratitude will be ever with them thank you